Hey guys, um, Lord God, I pray that you will bless this word. I pray that this revelation that you're about to re reveal to your people, that it will convict their hearts where conviction is needed. I pray that it will bring clarification to their soul where clarification is needed. Lord God, I pray that this word will not be neglected. It will not fall on deaf ears, Lord God, because this is a, a very important word that we often overlook. It is right before our eyes in the scriptures in the Bible, but it is often overlooked. So Father God, I even thank you that you brought this revelation to me, O oh God. And I pray that those who are under the sound of my voice, that they will begin to receive this revelation and they will adjust according to how the revelation speaks to them individually and collectively in Jesus name I pray amen <clears throat> so this took place um I think it was last month and you know I tired with God about it for a while and I was also on a break he had me on like this kind of sabbatical thing so I could rest up from posting you know videos on YouTube so know this word is not late for many of you, for many of you who will probably say, oh, you got this word last month in October and you just releasing it. It's not late. I do things on the Lord's timing and not every time when you get a word mean that it needs to be released right away. We have to learn prophets and prophetic people. You have to learn to tarry with the word of God. Yes, he will give you a word and we'll say, oh, yes, yeah, release this right now. But there are certain words that you we, we must tarry with to get the fullness of its revelation. So when we bring it to God, people, we're not bringing it to them. Why am I talking like this? Why am I going down this line? So when we bring the word to God, people, we're not bringing to them in choppy and, and without clarity. All right. So on October 21st, it's like the Lord kept saying to me, what happened to the 380? What happened to the 380? I'm like, God, what do you mean? What happened to the 380? And then he said, I'm talking about the day of Pentecost. He said only 120 men and women was in the upper room and was filled with the Holy Spirit. But he said, I did not command 120 men. He said, I commanded 500 men. You know, in 1 Corinthians, it say that Jesus gave, com gave the command to about 500 people that they should wait to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. 500 people. Yet in Acts 1 verse 15, it says that there were only 120 men and women in the upper room that were filled with the Holy Spirit. And while I'm happy that these 120 men got filled with the Holy Spirit, my heart became concerned as to, yo, what happened to the 380? Because yes, I'm happy that there are 120 men that was filled with the Holy Spirit, but I would, I would have been more happy if all 500 that was invited to the upper room were filled with the Holy Spirit. Could you have imagined how different and how profound the, 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 the day of Pentecost would have been? What, 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 I'm, I wonder what, how that would have shaped the body of Christ now and even shape history now if all 500 were present. But out of the 500 people that were invited to be at the upper room, only 120 men and women were in the upper room that got filled with the Holy Spirit. What happened to the other 380? And in my mind, in my conversation with God, I'm like, God, maybe they got busy. Maybe they couldn't wait anymore. Maybe they didn't believe. Maybe they were tired. Maybe they were sleepy. Maybe they got occupied with the issues of life. I'm happy that 120 men receive, but my heart couldn't help but to, to feel for the 380 that missed out. And then I understood that it, that wasn't my burden. It was actually the, the burden of the Holy Spirit. You know, while the, while the Holy Spirit is happy that 120 men receive the filling of the Lord, I do believe it, the Holy Spirit was grieved that 380 men, 380 people missed it out on being filled. And now here God said, in the coming months and in the coming year, years, the Lord is looking for a waiting people. 
I hear God say, and then he, I hear God say, I hear God ask, will you be a part of the 120 or will you be a part of the 380? Will you be a part of the 120 that waited in the upper room and received from the Lord? Or will you be um, a part of the 380 that couldn't wait or didn't have the interest of even going into the upper room in the first place? I hear God say, perfect your weight so that the Lord can say, these are they that waited. The Lord desired to say to you and about you that these are they that waited. We are moving in a sea. We're moving in a season um, um, that's called these are they that waited. We're moving in a time where God is expecting to say about you. These are they that waited. The only the, the, well done is not the only thing that God desired to say about his children, but he desired to say that these are they that waited. Will you be a part of these that these are they that waited? The body of Christ, we have a issue when it comes to waiting and waiting on the things of God. And when we do decide to wait, we don't know how to wait effectively. We wait with grumbling. We wait with more, with, 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 with murmur. We wait with frustration. We wait out of faith. We wait out of the will of God. But God is, he, he's, he's looking at your, the posture of your weight. God is analyzing. He's looking. He's watching. How are you waiting? Some of you, we are waiting for something. And it's just like every five seconds, it's like, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Is it there yet? Has it come yet? Has it come yet? And God is just like, J -j just wait. Wait and minister at the same time. Some of us who are waiting on your husband or you're waiting on your wife, this, this constant repetitiveness of where is he? Where is she? Where is he? Where is she? Can you just not wait and minister and, and let God do what he's doing. Some of us are waiting on a house and we're just like, where's the money? Where's the money? Where's the money? This is just a quick, why are you questioning about the thing that you're waiting on? You know, there are times when you can ask God, because it's an ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find. But when it comes to waiting, the Bible say, wait and be of good courage. It didn't say wait and ask questions. <laughs> it, it didn't say wait and be, be a quest, uh, a, a interviewer that interviews the Holy Spirit every five seconds about the thing that you're waiting on. It said, wait and be of good courage and he will strengthen your heart. That means that as you wait and you're waiting in good courage, he will strengthen your heart to continue to wait. You have not because you waited not. You receive not because you waited not. God cannot trust you because you don't know how to wait. It's not just about waiting, but it's about how do you wait? The Lord desired to say that these are they that waited. Will you be a part of the 120 or will you be a part of the 380? <coughs> Excuse me. The 380 that did not wait it and did not be filled. Allow the Lord to reveal to you your, your weight in posture. Allow the Lord to reveal to you your posture of waiting. How are you waiting on the things of the Lord? His promises are yes and amen. So they are sure. They are sure. You know, Isaiah 55 said his word cannot return unto him void. So anything that he has said to you and about you, about you it is sure. But how are you waiting? That is the key question perfect your weight. I'm not saying that you should be perfect while waiting, but perfect your weight. Perfect your weight. Perfect your weight. Your weight. Perfect your weight. You know, there's a thing in the prophetic that when the Lord allows a prophetic message or a prophetic person or a, prof or a prophet to repeat something three times or more, that emphasis is something that you should be paying attention to. Perfect your weight. And I've repeated that more than three times. So God is watching how we wait. And how you wait will determine how he moves his hands next in your life. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he will strengthen your heart. Amen.